Good morning. Hey, Gilbert. Here's uh, coming up one week away. We've got the July 4th parade. We have some registration uh, uh, things available. Um, if you know some people that want to put something, enter something into the float. Uh, if if not, um, that's fine. Know that next Sunday we are only doing church at 8 a.m. and then we're going straight over to the parade. This coming Wednesday and Thursday, well, Wednesday for sure, the kids are going to be here getting stuff ready for the float. They're going to tie-dye shirts. They're going to prepare things. So have your kids come out. Have the youth come out. Uh, it's going to be a fun night. Wednesday night, we'll provide some food. Um, and then if we need to uh, finish or finalize a few things, we'll do that Thursday night. But, but next Sunday is the July 4th parade. It's also that next Sunday is, the, is July 4th, so um, it's also the July 4th fireworks. You are invited to come use the church lawn, come hang out, come park in the parking lot, you know, wherever you want to go. Um, just come out and enjoy the fireworks. It'll be a great time, great time to hang out together again and just fellowship. So let's just pray for great weather that day. Um, but remember, church next Sunday, 8 a.m. only. Thank you very much. So this morning, um, before we get into too many other things, I want to start a new summer series. I, I, and, and we'll do this on the off weeks and stuff, but um, I want to start um, a, a series called The Kingdom of Heaven is Like. The Kingdom of Heaven is Like. You know, what is it like in heaven? Well, Jesus told us through his parables, and, and so we're going to kind of concentrate on Jesus' parables and, and what the kingdom of heaven is like. And I do want to say this. Out of his 37 parables, Jesus was always positive. So when we have a negative attitude, we better check ourselves because he was positive. Oh, he talks about some things that can be bad or negative, but he was talking about the positive side, such as today, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net. It's like a net. And, and so, you know, when we talk about that net and, and we think about the July 4th parade and we think about the fireworks and we think about, you know, the people that are going to be there. Listen to these verses as we read them. And I'm in Matthew 13, and I'm going to start reading in verse 47. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind. There's every kind of people that it's going to be at the parade. There's every kind of people that will be around at the fireworks. See, Jesus just said cast the net, and we'll talk about that. And gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and they sat down and gathered the good into the vessel and threw away the bad. Let's pray. Father God, we know that we've heard for years and years and years, there's a heaven and there's a hell. And we're going to be discussing the kingdom of heaven is like so we know there's a great place that you're preparing for us to go to. It's a hope that we have, and we thank you for that. But there's also a place that the bad have to go, and it's called hell. And so we want to know and differentiate um, uh, for others in, because we want to go to heaven. We wouldn't be listening to this if we didn't have hope. We wouldn't be hearing this if, if, if we didn't have a chance I thank you, Jesus, for giving us that chance. I thank you, Jesus, for just showing us what the kingdom of heaven is like. Holy Spirit, take over. Let these words be straight from you, God. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In verse 49, it says, So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. And there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing 
of teeth. There truly is a hell also. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And then in verse 51, Jesus said to them, have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes, Lord. So they were understanding. And, and, and Jesus wants us to understand. Number one, you have the net. Our net is the gospel message. It's the gospel message. The sea or the lake is, is the world. It's the world. And the fish are the people. It's all the people that are going to be at the parade. It's all the people that are going to be at the fireworks. That's, that's the fish. And the sea is anybody in the world. It's the world that's out there. And the net is our gospel message that we have to give. The Bible talks about casting the net and fish and fishermen. You know, in other places, if you look back before this, now we're in Matthew 13, but if you look back to Matthew 4, Jesus was already calling fishermen to follow him. In Matthew 4, we find that there was four fishermen called to be his disciples. I'm in verse 18. It says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net. They were casting a net. They were fishing, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me. Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. See, they were, they were working at the time that, that Jesus took um, and, and um, asked them to come follow him. But they had to leave everything. Then it goes on, in verse 21, there, there was two brothers. And it goes on and says, going on from there, he saw two other brothers. You ever heard that statement? A brother from another mother? Well, here's the brothers from another mother. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. They were working. They were fixing things. They were mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father, and followed him. Could you imagine? You're at work, and you just get up and follow this man. You leave everything. You leave your mom and dad, and you just go to follow Jesus. See, that takes a lot of faith, a lot of faith. But we can have that faith. You know, that was one part. Okay, so that actually, that took faith for them boys to do that, for those brothers, the two sets of brothers to do that. Then we saw Jesus in the middle of Matthew um, giving a, um, uh, a spiritual story, okay? A spiritual story that, that opens our eyes about the gnat, about the sea, and about the people, okay, the fish, Okay, so then we, you, you have something going on in faith, then you have something going on in spiritual, then it gets manifested, manifested by God in the natural. What happens, what prayed, what was prayed about, what was stepped out in faith in the, in the spiritual ends up happening in the natural at the end. After Jesus rises from the dead, and, and I pick up in John 21, in the end of Jesus' ministry, we find them back out fishing again. The fish are the story. The, 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 the casting the net is the story. Look at this. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples. So he must have, after he rose from dead, he's already showed him once. Now he's shown himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in um, this way, he showed himself to Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel, um, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of the disciples were gathered together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. If you haven't watched The Chosen, this um, part of Scripture is um, shown 
it's pretty powerful. It's very powerful. Take take a couple hours and watch the shows and watch some of the episodes. Uh, you'll get, in, in, I mean, you'll enjoy it. Let me just put it that way. You'll enjoy it. It is a little bit different, but you'll enjoy it. They said to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat and that they might, that, and that that night they caught nothing. So they went fishing, others went fishing with them, and they caught nothing. But when the morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. And he said, cast a net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. Look at their answer. You know, so they cast, and now they were not able to draw it because of the multitude of fish. They obeyed Jesus. They cast the net. When we, I'll get to that in a minute. They cast the net in faith. Jesus already showed them in the spirit spiritual in the story when he was with them and he told them the parable and now they're actually doing it and look what happens so they cast a net and now they're not able to draw it because of the multitude of fish because of the multitude of fish first it's done in faith Second, it's done spiritual, and now it's in the natural. It's manifested. God manifested an answer to prayer to them, and that's how God works with us. The net is the gospel message. You know, we know when we have a sea of people to talk to, if you want to tell them the gospel message, all you have to do is tell them the Christmas story and the Easter story, and you've told them the gospel message. But you also know John 3.16 is the gospel message. For God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The gospel message is told in Romans 10.9. Confess Jesus is Lord and believe God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. Or the gospel message is in all in captured in John 14, 6. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father in heaven except through Jesus. So our net is the gospel message, those main little scripture verses you've known for years and years and years. The Christmas story you've known for years. The Easter story you've known for years. If we can just tell the gospel message like Jesus um, said in, in John 14, 6, I, Jesus said, I am the way. People are looking for what way, what direction, what, what decision should they make? Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That was the net. Now let's go to the sea. Look at this. The world, the world is the sea. Our world is the Johannesburg area. It's Otsego County. It's Montmorency County. It's Atlanta. It's Lewiston. It's Gaylord. It's Spar. It's, it, it, you know, water, wherever it might be around us. That's our little area that God has us. This July 4th parade is going to bring a sea of people. There will be a sea of people. How are we going to treat them? We're going to love them like God would love them. We're going to give like Jesus would give. And we're going to move like the Holy Spirit would want us to. We have an opportunity at the fireworks and at the parade to touch people's lives with the message, with our net, the message of God. And now God's bringing it straight to us. This is why we're going to go serve the way Jesus served, the way Jesus asked us to be servants. Jesus even said, I did not come to be served. I came to serve. And then he did it. You know, the, the fish are the people. The fish are the people. He even said, he said to them, cast a net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. 
Cast a net and you'll find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw because of the multitude of fish. When we cast a net properly, when we give God's love properly and cast that net, we're going to draw some people that have been looking for God. We're going to draw some people who have been hurting and been pain. We're going to draw some people who need some relational help. All they wanted was a family, and the family of God can stand strong with these people. We just have to cast a net. Jesus said, lift up my name, and I will draw all people unto you. All we have to do is lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name that's above every name. Do it with love. Do it in the spirit of hope. Do it with faith. Do it with peace. Give them the peace of God that's beyond understanding. In Matthew 13, 52, we finish with this, okay? In Matthew 13, 52, it says, Then he said to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out his treasure, things new and old. He brings out things. He reminds us of holiday. This reminds me of holiday meals. And, and you know, we have a holiday coming. And people are going to be bringing and cooking and, and inviting people. And, 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 you know, one of the things that always happens at a holiday meal, everybody wants mom's special dish or grandma's special dessert or, or somebody to do their special sauce on the meat or their special cooking on the grill. Everybody asked for that special something that was old and everybody can count on it because it was always good. But you know what? We also like a new recipe. Hey, did you try this? I remember Trisha um, with the sea salt cookies, um, uh, sea salt caramel cookies or whatever at Christmas time. It, it's those small little things. Oh, I'll try it. I'll try one. No, I'll have two or three or four. No, it, 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 here's the thing. We love trying new things. So Jesus puts in his, the kingdom of heaven is like a householder brings out of his treasure things new and old. We have to, we have a heritage. You have family heritage that, that you want to keep intact. We want those good things. We want those good casseroles or we want that good dish. However, we also want to try new things. And that's where we love new shiny things. We love it. And see, as long as we keep an open, an open ear and an open heart to heavenly revelation, Jesus brought us a new, more excellent way. You had the Old Testament for years and years and years. Even God, he brought his son, Jesus Christ, and he came and brought new and I want to bring you something new. I want to do something together. I want to do, um, starting July 26th, I want to do a, the 260 journey together. I, I want us to enjoy the New Testament together. This book, it's a devotional, small devotional and it is on audio, so, so you can find it on audio. We can, you know, you don't have to read it. If you want us to order a book, they're $20. But I want us to take a time. I, I, I understand the Old Testament is good, and it is great, and the stories are wonderful, and great examples. But Jesus came to give us a new, more excellent way. So I want to walk through the New Testament together. And, and this is like the new recipe. This is, this will give us a new taste. We'll be on the same page for a year. This is written, did you know there's 260 chapters in the New Testament? So we're going to go, how we're going to do this is we're going to read through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to read through five chapters, or we're going to listen to five and, and go through the devotional, it might take you a total of 10 to 12 minutes. Spend 10 to 12 minutes knowing that everybody else is going through it too. 
So we go through Monday through Friday. Then Saturday we'll catch up. If we miss a day or whatever, we'll use Saturday as catch up. We're here on Sundays. So Sundays we're here. So, so we're in the Bible on Sundays. And then Monday we'll pick up again. We're going to start this on July 26th. The 260 journey starting July 26th, it's going to be a new way for the church to connect in unity. We're going to get through this whole New Testament together, and it's going to be easy. It's going to be fun. I can't wait to enjoy it with you, and, and we're not going to forget the old. We'll be here. Love you. See you um, soon. Remember July 4th. Invite somebody to be in the parade. Come on out Wednesday night, please, and, and, and help us get things together. Thank you.